morning, everyone. Good morning. We are recording this morning's service, hopefully, if it cooperates. So we also welcome anyone who views the service on YouTube later today. It's wonderful to be in the Lord's house. And there are lots of announcements on the back of your bulletin. Today is Encore Sunday. Encore is the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and we're taking a special collection. If you want to, you can designate um, that the money go to a specific fund at Encore. Um, they have a fund set up for Ukraine. They have a fund set up for just general, wherever the, there's the most need. There are funds for things in the in is in Susquehanna Conference. Um, so if you want your donation to Encore to go to anything in particular, just um, indicate that with a note or in the memo of your check. Um, at 6.30 today, there is a cluster meeting in Tunkhannock, 6.30 this evening, at Tunkhannock UMC. This church is part of the Endless Mountains Cluster, which includes churches from Dimmick all the way down to Center Moreland and all the way over to um, Skinner's Eddy and West, and West Auburn, South Auburn. Um, so the clergy and um, lady from all the churches are invited to Tunkhannock at 6.30 to meet with the district superintendent. And we'll be talking about the needs of the churches, the needs of the community, and how we can work together. Monday night, the What It Means to Be United Methodist class will meet at Jeff and Jill's again. I have to warn you, we did have a little fun last Monday. We were there until almost 9.00 because we got sidetracked so many times that we weren't getting through our lesson as fast as we should have been. So we had to speed it up at the end. Um, but it was informative and also Jill's a wonderful host, so it was very relaxing. So we'll be there again Monday night. All are welcome, please join us. Next Sunday, we have a communion service here at 10 o'clock and the leadership will meet um, after the service. And then, depending on how long the leadership meeting goes, perhaps the Bible study group will meet after that. And, and that, that, that's a meeting for everybody, because we're going to be talking about Easter Okay, plans activities. for Easter. So if you're able to stay, please stay um, to nail down the Easter plans. All right, and then Easter is the 17th. It's coming up soon. Any other announcements this morning? Are we going to have a little fellowship after communion? Would you like to have a light refreshments after communion on Sunday? Perhaps you could talk about that at the meeting as well. Or do people like the idea? Yeah. Okay. Nothing too extravagant. Just coffee and a cookie or something. Yes. Okay. Anything else? All right, then. Thank you for your, all your help um, with the lunch on Wednesday at Tonkanic. It was a rousing success, and I know you all worked together to make that happen. So, thank well, you thank, very much. Well, thank you. We did not know we had an actress as a pastor. She did a very good job. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I do have a little bit of the actress in me. And Bob already reminded me, reminded me once this morning not to be too proud. So I'm going to try to keep it under control. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard nothing but compliments about the luncheon and everything. So. Thank you. Yeah, the, lunch, it was, the lunch was great. And I really enjoyed um, my preaching. So it was good. Team effort. Anything else? All right, let's stand for the call to worship. If you are able. <coughs> 
Welcome to this place. A place of love to all who return. Love has been waiting. Like a candle in the window. Lighting the way back. Hoping each child will return home. And past hurts will heal. Welcome to this place. We celebrate what has been found. And forgive what has been lost. Amen. You may be seated. Let us open our hearts to God as we pray together. Oh God, be with us this morning as we think about the reckless things that we and others have done. We ask that you open our hearts and fill them with love whether we have stayed on your righteous path or strayed into the mud and murk of recklessness, we are all your children. Children that you welcome with open arms. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we too can welcome everyone, friends and strangers, with open, loving arms. Amen. Our opening hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 133. <laughs> and are. 
often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other, and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment, and free us from sin. Amen. Amen. Our affirmation is a modern affirmation, number 885. Please stand for the affirmation. <clears throat> Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God our Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who has no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of God for all God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Thank you. 
Our song of response this morning is Psalm 32. I ask that you open your hymnals to page 766 because you'll see the, res the song of response there. But the words of this psalm, like so many, are kind of ancient and not very familiar. So a more modern translation is on the back of your bulletin. So if you keep your hymnal open, you'll have the response, and then you can use the bulletin for the words that we're going to say. Please stand for the song. <clears throat> Because your hand was heavy upon me, my energy was sapped as if in summer drought. So I admitted my sin to you. I didn't conceal my guilt. I said, I confess my sins to the Lord. Then you remove the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. should pray to you. During troubled times, the great flood won't reach them. You are my secret hideout. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of rescue. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will advise you and keep my eye on you. Don't be like some senseless horse or mule whose movement must be controlled with a bit and a bridle. The pain of the wicked is severe, but faithful love surrounds the one who trusts the Lord. You who are righteous, rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you whose hearts are right, sing out in joy. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Shout for joy, you are. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 32. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got all he had and set off for a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving. I'm going to go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. 
But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Oh, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. But the father said, Quick, servants, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. We should have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and he's alive again. He was lost and he is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son, who'd been working in the field, came near the house and heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Oh, your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became very angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been working for you like a slave and never, never disobeying any of your orders. You never gave me anything, even a young goat, so I could celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home and you kill the fattened calf and throw a party for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The word of God for all God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. You may be seated. Introduction and parable we just heard are very familiar. The parable of the prodigal son. Prodigal is another one of those words that isn't used very often. It means reckless. This morning we're going to look at the prodigal son and all the other people that are in the, the verses that we heard. The people in the parable and the people listening to Jesus. And every time I talk about one of the people, I want you to ask yourself, who is lost and who is found? And who are you? Who do you identify with the most? Who really strikes a chord with you. And if you identify with one of the people in the story a lot more, I ask you to try to put your place yourself in the place of the other people as well. Try to identify with them. So first the introduction. The first three verses we heard tell us who Jesus was telling the story to. Verse 1 says, Tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. And the Pharisees and legal experts were complaining because Jesus welcomed the sinners and ate with them. Notice that the sinners and tax collectors were listening to Jesus. Pharisees and legal experts 
were just criticizing him. So Jesus tells three parables because he has a message for those people and for us. The first parable is the parable of the lost sheep. The second, the lost coin. And the third, the lost brother, the one that we heard. They're all about celebrating something lost when it is found. So in the parable we heard, there are three people. The younger son, the father, and the older son. The younger son demands his inheritance. He doesn't ask his father. He demands it. He's tired of waiting for the old guy to die. Demands his inheritance. And then he goes out and spends it on wild living. To the point that he is almost starving to death. And has to get a job feeding pigs. He wished that he could eat the food that he was giving to the pigs. He was so low, his pride was gone. So he humbly went home and asked his father for a job. <clears throat> the father could have yelled at him, told him he was worthless, but he didn't. He ran to him, threw his arms around him, and had a party to celebrate because his son, who he thought was dead, is now alive. He welcomed him home immediately, so glad that he was home. And then there's the older son. The older son didn't leave. He was there working obediently, not trying to be rebellious, doing what his father asked him to do. And he's angry. He says his father never even gave him a little goat to celebrate with his friends. He's resentful. He's jealous. He doesn't even want to go into the party. Once again, his father goes to him, begs him to come in. And the son says, I work like a slave for you. Wow. He's so resentful. So who is lost and who is found in this parable? And who are you? The younger son is a lot like the sinners and tax collectors who were listening to Jesus. Tax collectors, by the way, were known for collecting too much money, more than they were supposed to, and putting the extra in their pocket. They had a bad reputation for cheating. Those sinners and tax collectors were listening to Jesus. We, all of us, are sinners, right? It's important for us to listen to Jesus. The young son who took off and lived a wild life until everything was gone. He humbled himself and came back to God. We also, as sinners, need to remember to understand that no matter what we do on our worst day, God always wants us to come home, to humble ourselves, 
let go of our pride and just come home like the younger son. Sometimes we're also like the younger son in the way that we demand blessings from God and then squander them, the way the young son demanded his inheritance. Have you ever sat down to pray and started out thanking God, thank you so much for everything I have, and then spent a little time praying for people you care about, praying for the community, praying for the world, and then before you know it, you start the laundry list of things you want God to do for you. <laughs> oh, and oh, by the way, God, I'd like this, and I'd like this, and can, can I have this, and please, and I have this next week, and I'd like that, and, and then you realize, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I spent like 30 seconds saying thank you and a minute praying for other people and I just spent five minutes asking God for things. Yeah, it's easy, isn't it, for us to turn our thinking to ourselves and the things we want. And then there's the father in the story. So happy that his son is home. The father is God. The father shows this abundant, endless love for both of his sons, just like God loves us. Abundantly. So what about the older son? He's a lot like the Pharisees and legal experts, isn't he? Grumbling, complaining, saying, you know, I've been faithful. I worked here day after day. We can be like that too, can't we? You know, I do a lot for this church. I do a lot for this church. I bake when we have fellowship time. I come over, I kill the mice. <laughs> I dust, I, you know, whatever it is that you do. Nobody ever says thank you to me. Nobody ever throws me a party. And then somebody who hasn't been here in a year, they show up and it's, oh, we're so happy to see you. <laughs> Do we ever get jealous and feel like we'd like to be noticed too? Of course we do. Everybody wants to be special. And it is important for us to recognize each other's contributions. We all need that. We can be like both sons, sometimes like the rebellious one, sometimes like the faithful, complaining one. The Pharisees were complaining. They were the leaders in the church. They were the rule followers. They've been following the rules their whole life, studying the Bible. And here's this Jesus comes along, says, everybody's welcome. But wait, wait a minute. <laughs> they didn't like that. <laughs> They thought that they deserved special treatment more than other people. But that's not the message that Jesus gives, is it? Jesus says, God just wants everybody to come to God, whether you've been faithful or not. Just come to God. And God celebrates. God celebrates every person who turns to God. The thing we have to remember when we're acting like the older brother, being angry, feeling neglected, feeling jealous, prideful, like nobody's noticing us. 
We have to remember that God's love is abundant. We don't have to grasp for it. We don't have to fight for God's attention or feel jealous. God's love is overflowingly abundant. There's enough for everybody. The psalm says, the one whose wrongdoing is forgiven, whose sin is covered over, is happy. The one the Lord doesn't consider guilty, in whose spirit there is no dishonesty. That one is truly happy. God just wants us to be honest with God. God wants us to be honest with God, and we, as the church, are God's ambassadors to the world, God's representatives. So God wants us to be God-like, to welcome, forgive, and love other people as much as we can. So the other thing that this parable tells us is that if there's somebody that you're worried about who seems lost, somebody you pray for and pray for and pray for again, and it seems like they're going to get their life together, they're going to come around, and then it all falls apart again. And they seem so lost. realize that they might have to fall a little lower before they're ready to come home. That son, the wayward son, the reckless one, he didn't come home until he was desperate, until he felt like there was no other option. He had to fall really far before he could let go of his pride. So if there's somebody you're worried about, they might have to fall a little further. And that's painful to watch. But when they finally come home, just remember to try not to be so mad at them <laughs> for all the pain you suffer while they were lost. And just celebrate, just be thankful and relieved and grateful that they finally came home and love them with all your heart. Be like the Father. At home with your own family and in community with our neighbors. I got a phone call last night. It was about 8 o'clock. The lady said, I called the Lemon Church and it gave me this number. I don't know what to do. And I thought maybe, you know, churches help people. Maybe you could help me. And I said, okay, what's going on? What, what's going on? And she said, I just can't do this anymore. I have to get out of here. I, I can't live here. There's just too much arguing. There's arguing and fighting all the time. And I don't know where to go. And then I heard a man's voice and he said, who are you talking to? And she said, oh, you have to follow me down here. You just had to follow me down here, didn't you? Had to know what I was doing. And they started to argue with each other. And she said, I'm sorry, I'll have to call you back. So I hung up the phone. It was a cell phone, so I found some resources online for Wyoming County, for the Women's Resource Center, the Victims Resource Center, and the homeless number. And I sent a photo, and I typed a text saying, if you need a place tonight, call this number, and I gave her the hotline. And then about a half an hour later, I called back. And she said, who's this? And I said, it's the pastor you called before. I just wanted to find out if you're okay. Are you safe? And she said, yes, I'm safe. My son is coming over. I didn't want to be alone. And then she started her, 
her voice cracked and she said, thank you for calling me back. It's so nice to know that somebody actually cares. That somebody cares. And I said, you know, call anytime. I hope you're okay. Let us know. And I hung up the phone and I thought, you know, that was so easy. I hardly did anything. All I did was call her back and ask if she was okay. That's all. And it, she started to cry. She was so touched. People just want to know that somebody cares. And that's part of what we can do. That's how we can show God's love. <clears throat> this morning we're going to take a collection for Encore. We're going to spend our money to show God's love. If you're not prepared, you can bring a check in or some money in next week. Or you can give online. I also want to mention, and we'll be talking more about this, that our church is part of the Endless Mountains Cooperative Ministry. And that group, you have representatives who have been going to the meetings. We're about this far from committing to delivering meals to people in this area, close to the church. So we're going to be looking for drivers, and we're going to be looking for the names of people, maybe your neighbors, maybe family members, who could use a little help, who would appreciate having a meal delivered to their home. So start thinking about that. We'll be talking about it more. And the next time somebody needs something, or somebody shows up who you haven't seen in a while, remember to be like the Father in the parable. Be like God. Welcome them. Tell them how happy you are to see them. Don't ask why it's been so long. Don't feel jealous if nobody notices if you're not here one Sunday and something was happening and nobody asked, and then you show up again. We know that you're faithful and that you'll be here when you can. And when you are here, we'll be glad and celebrate. And if you ever feel lost and you're afraid to come back, don't be afraid. Just come home. God will always be there waiting for you. And love Amen. As we sing our hymn of response, come back quickly to the Lord. Remember that whether you're the one who is lost or the one waiting at home, God calls us to celebrate. Everybody loves a party. Number 343. <laughs>
know we're welcome home. This is the time when we share our joys and our concerns, our celebrations. Does anybody have a celebration? Still not spoken. Hey, Sally has continued to be a quitter. Not a smoke. Congratulations, Sally, for quitting. That's great. That's really great. And we will continue to pray for her. It's a hard thing to do. Yes, it is. Very hard thing to do. So good job. Thank you. 37 days. Who's <sighs> counting? <laughs> 37 days. They say the first, how many are the hardest? They say the, <laughs> they say the first 21 days. Oh, so you're over that one? Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Any other celebrations? Thank you for all the prayers. Um, I really needed that. Thank you so much. I'm just glad I'm on the, old, on the right side of the old house. Yeah. The it was not fun. You were pretty sick. Uh -huh. Well, we're glad you're back. And we're glad you're feeling better. And uh, I, I also, I, you're, the men in your family never watch these videos, right? No. Because <laughs> I was also praying for them that they would learn how to wash the dishes. Yeah, well. <laughs> the husband doesn't know how to wash the dishes. That hasn't happened yet? Oh, no, he doesn't. It does? Oh, okay. I will continue to pray for that. I'm not. Yeah, I pray for a uh, certain one person in my family, too. Not my husband, but somebody else. That they learn how to wash the dishes as well. But we're glad you feel that. Thank you. Any other celebrations or concerns? Yeah, your sermon was appropriate today because we have two folks that have come home on this Sunday. We yes. Have seen in a while. Yes. It's great to see welcome. You. It is great to see you always. Yes. Welcome home. And those of you out there in the World Wide Web, if you have been wanting to go to a church and have been afraid that you wouldn't be welcome, don't be afraid because God will welcome you. So. If you feel like it, get out there and go to church, if you're able. And if you're not, we understand. Right? Right. Yes, it's great to be together. There is something said for actually seeing people in person. It's great fellowship. Anybody else? Any concerns this morning? The people of Ukraine, yeah. It's just awful. It is really awful. Um, we need to pray for the people of Ukraine and also the people of Russia. Um, many are not happy about what's going on. Um, and the surrounding countries who are accepting all of these refugees, fleeing the war, um, yeah, it's a troubling, very troubling situation. Very troubling. I wanted to ask for prayers for, um, continued prayers for Irene Schiffer, who was in church today also, after a long illness. Um, she's doing better, so we're thankful for that. Um, if you know Martha from East Lemon, her niece Sarah was just diagnosed with breast cancer um, and she asked for prayers for Sarah and her mother Karen and one of my neighbors Dave Stelmack who lives in Quakertown and comes up on the weekends was in a bad car accident and has broken ribs a broken sternum broken fingers on one of his hands and he's a diabetic so healing is a difficult so Dave needs some prayers. Many prayers of thanks for everybody who helped with the lunch on Wednesday. It was wonderful, good team effort, and 
I've been reminded by Bob to pray for humility and to not be too proud, which I'm working on. But keep those thanks coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, seriously, let's pray. <laughs> Uh, oh Lord, it's hard to be humble. We come to you this morning. We've heard the words of a really familiar parable today. And it reminds us that sometimes, sometimes we are the hardworking, faithful child who gets jealous. And sometimes we're the child who demands blessings and then squanders them. We thank you for the bountiful blessings that you've bestowed on our lives, for your endless love that welcomes us back even when we're really falling off the path, and the welcoming love and friendship of this faithful community. Thank you for all these gifts. Thank you for the people who have gotten well, people who we've welcomed back this morning, who we've missed. Thank you for Sally's quitting and healing. And we pray, Lord, for the ones who are still sick, who need healing. We pray especially for the people most directly affected by the war between Ukraine and Russia. We pray for all of them. We humbly ask this morning that you comfort and protect those with the greatest needs. Open your arms to them and help them to know that no matter what, you will always be there. And we, as your representatives on earth, will continue to pray for their comfort and to provide help as best we can, as often as we can. Hear us now as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we collect our offering this morning, please give to Encore as you're able. I have a, I think I have a minute for mission in your bulletin. We would like to, I want to tell you uh, just a tiny bit about Encore. Kathy talked about it a little bit last week. Encore is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Um, it is a global organization. If you give to UMCOR with no designation, they will use the money to, to help in you know, the most dire need that comes up. They've helped in the U.S. in areas where there have been tornadoes, fires. They have helped um, Overseas right now, they're helping out in Ukraine in that region. Uh, there's always some need somewhere. Um, and the great thing about giving to Encore is that none of the money goes to administrative costs. It all goes to the aid effort. Um, we have also been asked, by the way, as a cluster, the Endless Mountains cluster, to donate gauze and gauze pads, which are going to be taken down to Mission Central and shipped over to the Ukraine. So um, 
the deadline is soon, unfortunately. I do not have the date. I think it's next Sunday. They want the materials by. Um, but very soon. So if you're able to purchase some thaws, rolls, or pads, um, they have to be gotten to the district superintendent. Let's now give a small portion of our blessings to the Lord for God's word. Oh, okay. 
noon, in the evening, and at the end of the day, remember that God always loves you and welcomes you home. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.